What is up guys, it's the Safe and Sound Alchemist, aka the Did You Hear That Sound Alchemist, bringing you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Now please ignore what I said in the past 10 seconds, because today we are giving you fan lore in the form of the Tau, everybody's favorite. So today we are diving deep into the lore on the Fior Sera Sept of the Tau Empire. Now this fan lore was created by the homie Colt, so all credit goes to him. The images you see here, most of them at least, are going to be his own army. Uh, really awesome color scheme, I really like it. Great lore, there's a ton of lore. So this will probably be split up into one or two parts depending on how it goes. But yeah, if you guys have any lore you guys want to send to us, uh, Facebook is the best way to get in touch with OMS. Now if you guys don't know, there are giveaways going on right now. So head on over to our uh, How Will the Reavers Betray the Imperium video for your chance to win a starter set and keep your eyes peeled because more giveaways are coming. Now there's also a Facebook giveaway that is going to be going on, so again, stay tuned for all things OMS because giveaways are happening. So guys, let's dive into this Tau lore. The Fior Sera Sept world of the Farsight Enclaves is a human colonized and terraformed world that has been home of the Shadow Colonist fleet descendants for thousands of years. Kept in hiding and honing their skills and tech to one day face the Imperium of Man, this human world pledged its allegiance to Commander Farsight, and they have bled at the side of this legendary commander and its forces in many battlefields and campaigns at the end of the 41st millennium. With the level of acceptance as seen as brother in arms by the Tau forces of the Farsight Enclaves, the warriors from the Fior Sera Sept became a different breed of fighters, not fully considered Tau fire warriors, yet trained and tested in the same way that they have obtained recognition and are being accepted as an auxiliary force to the Farsight Enclaves. They learn, fight and live by the doctrines of the fire cast, and they are ready to dedicate their lives in the aims of the greater good and a further ultimate objective in the end of the Imperium. The symbol delivered by them with the name of their sept world represents a human hand of five fingers extending from the red center symbolizing Commander Farsight and his enclaves. The colors of the armed forces, silver and fire orange, were selected by their leaders to cast upon the strength of their steel determination and the scorching fire of their indomitable will. Tau fire warriors that are born and trained in this sept would use the same colors as their human allies, and they are inspired to deliver their best in battle for their meaning and pride. The Tau sediments that grew in this sept world have come to cohabitate and integrate with their human allies as much as the teachings of the greater good guide them to. With the arrival of Shas El Torchstar to the Enclaves, the development of the XV-104 Riptide and many other battlesuit support technologies began on Fior Sera and the rest of the Enclaves. Human warriors from Fior Sera were nicknamed as Fio Shas or Gwe Shas by the Firecast warriors that fought their first battles with them. At the start, a tool to recognize them apart from the Fire Warriors or Gwe Vesa, units from the Fior Sera population acquired to those nicknames with great pride, as Fio means Earth and Gwe means Human. They are being called the Human Warriors or Earth Warriors, elevating their pride to the true humankind and the true Terrans they believe to be. The Fio Shas from Fior Sera are equipped with a matrix of interface. Held at the arms or wrists of their uniforms, this matrix allows them to control and pilot Tau battlesuits with neural connection technology developed in the times of the Second Concealment. Every single Fio Shas requires to submit him or herself to a rigorous protocol of classified special training, secret to all Tau forces. This training is based on battlesuit simulations held with virtual reality projectors that prepare all the FIO shots for emergency maneuvers on XV-8 crisis battlesuits. Because training, physical abilities, and martial discipline is held to the top of existence among the FIO shots, the La Rua, Kao Ui, and Tio Vei military units are held as won by human and Tau forces in the detachments under the banner of the Five Finger Hand. 
The only distinction made was the restrictive military growth of the Fio Shas elites, and they are not allowed to pilot the X-8 series battlesuits. During the campaign held in the objective to cleanse the Sept worlds of the Farsight Enclave at the end of the 41st millennium, the valuable actions from many Fio Shas in desperate times on board of battlefield scavenge battlesuits made the military heads of the Enclaves to consider the trial by fire for these Gui Shas. For some decades, the Fio Shas were tested in the use of XV-25 stealth battlesuits and with gratifying successes from their performance in battle. It took 50 years of good results brought by the stealth Guisha to earn the privilege of them testing the iconic XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit. Now this privilege was conferred by Commander Farsight himself during one of his returns from meditation in dire times. The separation from the traditional ways and the overzealous methods of the Ethereals with the addition of the battle-proven might of the Fio Sha made this achievement possible. Even with its great results in battle, Field Truth stands to this day that the Field Shas holds the worst percentage results on the trials of fire set to them. Only one out of twenty Field Shas pass their first trial, and the numbers on the further ones are even less. The Tao officers of the fire cast point that the boiling bravery and boldness of the Field Shas is greatly responsible for this. Yet the ones that achieve their final trial of fire become amazing pilots, greatly valued by the enclaves. In the one and a half century since Fior Sera had been part of the enclaves, only four Fior Shas have been able to achieve the ultimate honor of becoming commanders. The first two came into spans of 70 and 50 years in between them, yet in the last two decades, two prodigies achieved the rank and now command cadres of the Fior Sera army. Fio Shas commanders have established the traditions and ways of their people into their strategies and chain of command. One example is the usage of drone nets to recognize and gather position information of enemies and valuable data for targeting them to deliver brutal strikes with low altitude air deployments. This version of the Monka path was related by the Tao scholars as inspired by the concealment strategies Fio Sera held for millennia. And now let's learn a little bit more into these heroes of the Fior Sarah Sept, beginning with Marshal Beatrix Pendragon from the Valkyrie. The greatest ace that had lived up to her time among the pilots of the fighter defense grid, Marshal Beatrix Pendragon from the Valkyrie left a deep mark of heroism and admiration among the population of the colonist fleet, Shadow, and even deeper on those born from the Valkyrie line. She achieved to pilot the record number of defense missions with 211 successful flights and stayed in service until the age of 58 years, the age when she sacrificed her life to set a defense interceptor in the way of a Xeno ship that intended to board and ravage on the Eden, the main arc ship of the fleet, and the main source of resources it had. Since then, the stories of Marshal Beatrix were told to the generations of the Valkyrie descendants bringing the tradition to name at least one girl born from each family from the Valkyrie line to carry on this legacy. Commander Donovan Zaragoza from the Victoria The first fire warrior of Fiorcera that managed to surpass his trials of fire and climb in the military hierarchy of the fire cast is known as Commander Donovan. He was the first Guayvesa to be chosen by the generals of the Farsight Enclaves as field commander and pilot the XV-85 Enforcer Battlesuit. Fior O. Zaragoza, as he was called by the Tau, faced the High Fleet Kraken in constant defenses of four systems commanded by Shas Ovesa. In multiple incursions of the Tyranids, Zaragoza and his teams of XV-8 Crisis Suits contained and eradicated the threat of the Swarm. His suit was always armed with four fusion blasters, and he became a symbol of hope to such a degree that after the approval of Farsight himself, and with the participation of human engineers and the Earth cast, a suit was designed for Zaragoza and future human commanders. Words of hope and strength were inscribed on his suit, and they were also used until the last battle for the eradication of the Tyranids, in which Zaragoza gave his life facing and annihilating the last swarm lord, with which the Kraken fleet countered at its sector. And that is where I will end the lore for today. 
Like I said, there is tons of lore to dive into here. For example, we still have the past history of the Fiorcera Sept and the culture of its people. So if you guys like this, thumbs it up. Let me know in the comments below if you want to go ahead and go with a part two on this. Or also comment down below as to what parts of this you guys enjoyed, uh, what parts the cult can work on. Um, and yeah, let us know. Also, don't forget, we do have giveaways going, so check those out. Um, I believe yesterday we had one on uh, the Reavers, or not the Reavers, the Primaris Marines and how they may betray the Imperium. I know, heresy, right guys? So check that out. And of course, guys, if you have more uh, lore and more stories that you guys have created, send it on over to us and we might feature it on a video. And yeah, that's all I have. Don't forget to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon for more things 40k, and we'll go from there. One last thing I do want to note, um, I don't think I've said this before, but we have started Age of Sigmar lore. We began with my personal favorite army, the Sylvaneth. Now, don't be alarmed, we're still going to do and focus most of our time on 40k and 30k. So I'd say it's probably like maybe one video, two videos a month on AOS, and then the rest of the month will be obviously 30k and 40k. So don't fear, guys, we're still going to do uh, Warhammer stuff. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got. So as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Oh,